One of the new features that we're most excited about in Firefox Developer Edition are our new performance and profiling tools. I've put together an example using the Stanford JavaScript crypto library so we can see how those work. Specifically, we're going to be using a function from that library called pbkdf2, which is a password-based key derivation function. That's just a fancy way of saying it's a function that takes a password and a salt and iterates over them many, many, many times until you get something out on the other end that's usable as an encryption key. Now, let's see what sort of impact calculating this key has on our browser's performance. I'll go into the DevTools and choose the Performance tool. Then I'll start recording a profile. Generate a few keys. Uh, that should do it. Now, before we get into the details of what you're seeing here, let's take a higher level overview. The performance tool is split into several sub-tools, a waterfall, a call tree, a flame chart, and more coming soon. What all of these tools have in common is this timeline and frame rate chart at the very top. The frame rate chart should be self-explanatory. The timeline, on the other hand, takes a little of explanation. Every marker you see on the timeline represents a type of work that the browser was doing when it was profiled. They're color-coded, so things that are pink represent styling and layout. Things that are green represent painting, actually rendering the bitmap that gets shown on screen. And orange represents computation, typically JavaScript. We can click on the funnel in the top left if we wanted to say, hide all the style recalculations or all the paints. But for now, let's leave everything on. It should be immediately obvious that our frame rate drops coincide with these big orange chunks of JavaScript. And if we click and select, we can zoom in and see that we've got a, an event handler in response to our click that was taking about 400 milliseconds to resolve. That's not ideal. And while the waterfall tells us what type of work was slowing our browser down, it doesn't tell us exactly what specific work was being done. For that, we need to look at the call tree. The call tree is the aggregate summary of everything the profiler saw while it was running. What the profiler does is a thousand times a second takes a snapshot of the Firefox process's call tree. And by looking at what functions are on that stack and where they are on the stack, it figures out what is actually taking, what's actually being computed, what's actually taking time. Here we're viewing the, the call tree inverted, which is the default. That means that the leaf nodes, the things that are actually being computed at the deepest level of the call stack whenever it got sampled, are what show up at the top level. So from this, we can see that this SHA-256 block function was being called about 50% of the time that we profiled it and took a total of about 160 milliseconds. This sort of overview is really useful if we want to figure out how to, how to optimize our site. From looking at this, we know that if we could speed up that block function by 50%, that should speed up the entire computation by about 25%, since that function alone represents half of the time that we're spending. We can also drill into this to see what functions tended to call this block function. It looks like it gets called from SHA-256 finalize, which gets called from HMAC digest, which on down the tree eventually gets called from pbkdf2. What this doesn't tell us is whether this function took a very long time or got called a whole bunch of times. For that, we need to look at the flame chart. The flame chart shows a visual representation of, of the call stack. So in this case, we can see that we started with our script, our derived sync event handler, called into SJCL PD, PBKDF2, and that eventually called down at the very bottom into the SHA-256.block function. And there's another, and there are a couple more. And we see that there are quite a few of these. So in this case, this function was called very, very many times. And that might influence how we decide to optimize it. We can also go back to the call tree and click on this line number to see what exactly that function is. In this case, it performs one cycle of SHA-256. And since we're going to be performing many thousands of cycles, it makes sense that it shows up as it does on the flame chart as a whole bunch of little calls to SHA-256.prototypeBlock. So an interesting property about this function is that it's actually designed to be computationally expensive. You want it to be hard to generate a key for someone so that it takes more resources and more time to brute force something. 
Which is all well and good, except this computation is killing our performance. If we were on a native application, we'd probably try to put it on its own thread so that the, the main UI thread could still be responsive, still be interactive for the user, while another thread in parallel was off computing this key. It turns out that with web workers, we can actually do that on the web as well. And I built that into this example. If I tick this checkbox and record a new profile, you can see that I can generate keys without having hardly any impact on the frame rate. A pretty steady 60 frames a second throughout, averaging 59.05. So what did it take to do this? The code's actually pretty simple. I've got my event listener for clicking on that derive button, which just looks up the value of the different input fields and then switches based on whether or not use web workers was checked. If it wasn't, we go into this derive sync function, which calls sjcl.misc.pbkdf2 and passes it the salt, the password, the salt, and the number of iterations. When it gets a response, it prepends that to the table. If we are using web workers, we go and create a new worker and give it the task worker.js. We add a message event listener. And when we hear back from that worker, we prepend whatever it reported back to the, the results table, and we tell the worker to terminate. So this is kind of a fire and forget worker. If you're going to do many of these computations or many different computations, you probably set up one long lived, long running worker. But in this case, we're gonna set it up, use it, get rid of it. And then to kick off the computation, we come down here and say worker.post message, and we send in the parameters it needs to call that pbkdf2 function, a password, salt, and number of iterations. So what does this worker.js task look like? It's pretty simple. We import the sjcl script. We add event listeners inside the worker for messages. So when we post message into it, this is what fires. And this simply calls sjcl.misc.pbkdf2 with the parameters that we messaged in. When it's done, it messages the key back out. And that's all it took to go from that to that. The same amount of computation is happening, it's just happening on another thread, so our site remains responsive. And this isn't just a theoretical problem. There is an open source web application called Laverna that's kind of a, an online notebook, and it supports client-side encryption of all your data. So if I type in my password and start profiling, you should see something familiar when I unlock. There's a DOM event. If we go into the call tree, we can see that we're spending a lot of time in a function that's called by SHA-256 finalize, which is called by HMAC digest. If we go to the flame chart, we see the same sort of, same sort of pattern we saw before. So this is a real world case where if Laverna were to delegate this computation to another thread, they'd be able to keep the interface much more responsive when they're decrypting my messages or notes as they were. That's it for this tour of the DevTools. You can learn more on the Mozilla Developer Network at developer.mozilla.org.